good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to the third series in this chatbot introduction and hands-on workshop with Oracle Digital Assistant. Uh, very warm welcome to you all. If this is the third time you've been with us, I'm Martin Jarvis. I'll be your host for this afternoon. Uh, on the line with me, I've also got uh, Ruben Rodriguez. Ruben, do you want to say hello? Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome and thank you for being here. Um, fortunately, I think Jürgen, he's on the line, but he can't speak at the moment, so we'll just sort of have to say hello and wave to Jürgen. Um, also, Grant Ronald should be dropping in at some point this afternoon uh, to help with questions and things later, so uh, that'll be good. And the, uh, the other star that we've got uh, supporting this afternoon is Artie. Uh, if you've been with us for the previous two sessions, you'll know that Artie is our digital assistant to help you learn about digital assistant. Um, the URL is on the screen. It's uh, bit.ly slash artybot. Um, if you've been looking at our documentation this week, the good news is that Artie actually went live this week. Yeah, based on the, your last testing last week, you were our beta testers last week. Uh, so uh, Artie went live this week. He's now part of our documentation. So we'll point you to documentations and links and things as you go through. But uh, Artie is going to be a key member of our team helping to answer the questions this afternoon. So, as I said, this is a, the third installment in our uh, series of, uh, of this training and this meetup. Uh, in the first session, we went through an, an overview and got you set up with your free cloud. cloud free sec, I can't even speak at the moment. We got you started with your free cloud service. Uh, in the last session, last Thursday, uh, Ruben actually went through in a lot of detail how to get hands on with your digital assistant, uh, how to create your first skills. And he introduced Catacoda, which is the, the system that we're using to, to help you uh, with the training materials. So uh, it's another hands-on session today. And um, again, Ruben's going to be leading uh, lots of demos, lots of hands-on for you. Um, we had some confusion last time whether you should follow along or whether you should watch. Um, and it's entirely up to you. If you're one of these people who prefer to listen uh, and then do the exercises later, that's great. Uh, but if you'd like to start trying to type and, and do things at the same time as Ruben, if you're one of those kind of right brainers where you can do two things at, the, at once, then, then great, like, yeah, good for you. Uh, it's completely up to you how you want to do this. But um, please make the most of the training and um, the expertise that uh, Ruben will be <laughs> demonstrating this afternoon. Uh, just coming up on the next session, the final session, this coming Thursday, uh, Grant will be back and he's going to go through what we would consider all our best practices You know, in these two or three sessions that we've done so far, we've been kind of teaching all the basics and, and how everything works. Um, but you know, there's a, there's a difference between building a chatbot and then building a great chatbot. And that's hopefully what uh, Grant's gonna be able to share with you on Thursday is really what makes the difference between a, just an average bot and an awesome bot. So as I said, you know, today's session will be very hands-on uh, and lots of live demonstrations. We'll be using the Catacoda system again. Um, lots of questions last time about whether you needed to register for a Catacoda account. I'm sure you still, you've done that from last time. If you weren't here last time, then uh, you will need to register for a free Catacoda account uh, to be able to access the, the training materials, but that is free of charge. And you, you know, today you'll be continuing to build your own digital assistant. Now, the, the, the question we keep getting asked is, uh, where can we find the recordings? Um, Oracle has its own system called Oracle Video Hub. Um, the links are here on the screen. Uh, I'll be putting these on the chat as we get started. Uh, but on the video hub, you can find re the recordings of the last two sessions, uh, plus lots of other things as well around digital assistant. We have a, a digital assistant channel with lots of interesting videos on. But you'll find the, um, uh, the, uh, the videos of the last two, but you can also subscribe to this channel so that uh, when, as and when we post the next two videos, you will automatically get a link. So today it's uh, hands-on training part two. Um, lots of support and resources to get you going. And I'll be here in the background along with Grant and Artie helping to answer questions. So I'm going to pass over now to our star of the day, which is Ruben Rodriguez. Ruben, over to you. Thank you very much, Martin. Before starting, as Martin said, uh, you can choose whether you want to actually do the labs uh, at the same time I do it or do it afterwards. Uh, I mean, we will be here until seven answering questions. Uh, so if you want to listen uh, and try to understand what we are doing, uh, you can do it afterwards. 
So um, I, I had some feedback uh, in the first session that people don't really know how to use Catacoda, so we will go through it uh, for a few minutes. So um, once, once you go to katacoda.com slash uh, R's and drop, uh, you will see this screen and there are two different hands-on labs. Uh, the first one uh, is meant to be for the ones with uh, Oracle Digital Assistant version 2102. And uh, the second one, uh, the one with 2104 here is meant to be for the ones with uh, Digital Assistant version 2104. Um, how it works. So you go inside a course, then you will find a list of uh, scenarios. So you can start doing one by one. First you start, you, you have some kind of introduction to the scenario. So for example, uh, just going back to the previous labs. Uh, so the first step is to enable the location entity. So you have inform detailed information and the screenshots to see what are, what are the actual steps you have to perform in order to uh, enable this uh, entity. After that, you will go through the, uh, to the next one by clicking on the continue button and uh, keep doing like that until you reach the end of the uh, lab. So um, today uh, we are going to cover the last two scenarios. Uh, in the first lab, we are going to create a custom component to connect to a uh, web service, a weather web service called openweathermap.org. So uh, openweathermap provides free APIs to retrieve uh, uh, weather data. Uh, so there, there are different services. So uh, I, th I think it's a good API to uh, not just include in, uh, in live projects, but also to, to do demos to customers. And in the last scenario, we will build a web widget uh, or, or we will use the web widget provided by Oracle uh, to expose the skill that we created. So uh, let's start with the scenario. Uh, as I said, in this one, we will be consuming a REST service uh, by creating a custom component uh, uh, with uh, JavaScript. Uh, the first thing you have to go to go, you have to do is to go to Open Weather Map API and register for free as well, uh, so you can get uh, an API key. Okay, so uh, you can call the services. Um, if by any chance you missed uh, the first two labs or you had some errors, I have uploaded uploaded the uh, the working skill for the first two labs uh, to GitHub. So you can go and download it. Um, there are a few steps I added a uh, couple of days ago uh, in order for you to uh, import this skill. So uh, if you already created the skill, the weather skill in, in your instance, you first have to delete it and then uh, you have to import it. So let's start the scenario. Uh, in, this is the, actually the first scenario where you will uh, take advantage of uh, Katakoda itself. Until now, it was just uh, a number of steps uh, for you to perform actions on OVA. But the good thing about Katakoda is that you have, on the left-hand side, you have like the, you know, the steps you have to follow. And on the right-hand side, you can have a terminal, a Linux terminal to do some actions or execute some commands, and have a terminal and an IDE that is a Visual Studio Code, so you can actually uh, uh, implement the component in there without the need of uh, an IDE installed on your computer. So um, first of all, we need to uh, configure the environment to create the uh, custom component. Um, Oracle provides a node module called bots node SDK that uh, provides you like a template so you can cre easily create a custom component. So uh, 
instead of typing on the terminal, you can just click on the on these uh, commands, and it will be automatically um, executed on the terminal. Um, so the API URL, uh, you can you will be able to see it uh, in the next steps because we will be using it, so you can get it afterwards. So the actually the uh, the first command, the installation of the uh, Node SDK, uh, has been completed. Uh, now we move to the ODA components folder. That is where we are going to store the uh, the component. Now we're going to create the uh, weather component uh, folder. So this is the folder of the component. Uh, we go inside the folder and we uh, make an npm in it minus y. So this means that all the values. Uh, so when you when you do an npm in it. Uh, it prompts you uh, to provide the name of the component, the version, the description, uh, the file that you're going to execute, uh, all these values, right? So if you use minus Y uh, uh, parameter, it will be automatically uh, by default. So it will take the default values. In this case, the name of the folder, for example. Uh, now we need to initialize the uh, component. So uh, using the bots node SDK init command, so this will create the structure uh, or the, or the uh, template for your component. So we execute it. And uh, it adds some files uh, that we will uh, see now. So uh, at the end, you, you are going to be doing this kind of commands in your own computer because at the end you are implementing the, uh, the component in your own IDE uh, in your computer. So you will need to do this. So the first command is executed once in the computer and then uh, every component you need to create, you can create a new uh, folder for it, initialize the node application uh, and the component and install the node modules that you want. So uh, for this lab, we're going to use two node modules. The first one is a request uh, to make uh, REST calls, uh, as I said here. So this uh, node module is deprecated. So uh, for production usage, you should, you should consider another modules like uh, Axios or alike. So uh, we proceed to create the, or to import or install so you, the... Ruben, yeah. maybe a, a tip for you. We actually include uh, node fetch now with the bots node SDK. So if you use oh. fetch, then you don't need to actually import anything yeah. extra. Okay, that's good to know. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Neither did I until someone asked the same question last time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so uh, now with request, the request module is installed. So we just have to install the date format. Uh, this is a module to uh, to manipulate dates uh, and print them in a specific format. So uh, so we have finished all these steps. Uh, you see that there is a tick uh, next to the command on every single step. So you so we can continue to the next one. We are done for now with the terminal. So we can go to the IDE. Fingers crossed to see if it is working now. Yes. Okay, so um, so this is the IDE with the component we have just created in the first step. Um, let's close the welcome. So uh, there are some files, for example, the package JSON uh, in dependencies. You can see the ones that we uh, added uh, to implement or to help us implement our component. There are some dev dependencies uh, like Express or the bot nodes SDK. So these dependencies will not be packaged uh, and uh, information related to uh, your component. Uh, then we have uh, the uh, main JS. This, is, this will be always the same. 
So this is just pointing to the folder where, where your uh, services or your components will be deployed or will be created. So in this case, is uh, components folder. And inside components folder, we have a like a template, a small uh, component uh, called hello world. You know, for, uh, for your own uh, components, you can use this as a template. You just need to modify the name of the component uh, maybe change the name of the file so it is not hello world. But in this case, uh, we can just remove it. As we have all the code here, we can just remove this uh, uh, file and uh, create a new uh, JavaScript file dot the name uh, query dot js. And we start uh, copying and pasting this code in here. So uh, in this, um, so this is the definition of the component. So you have first the name. This is the name that will appear on the user interface on ODA user interface after you import it. And then you have properties uh, that are uh, in and out parameters. So if you want to pass some information uh, uh, to the bot, I suggested to do it with these uh, variables. In this case, as we are going to request uh, for the weather, we have the location variable, the date variable, and the print variable. So uh, the location we are sending from the bot, uh, the date variable we are sending from the bot, and the print variable. So where we are, where we are going to store the actual uh, weather that we get from the API. So uh, next we have the supported actions. In this case, we have success, error, and date error defined. So these are the actions that, uh, or the different outcomes of the component. So if we get the, uh, so in detail, if we get, if we manage to get the weather details for the specific date and uh, location, we will transition to uh, or we will yeah, transition or create a, or make a success transition. So we can later use that in the, uh, in the dialog flow. If we get some service error, we can uh, transition to an error to error. And if the date is not, uh, maybe uh, the date is uh, greater than seven days, that is the maximum amount of time that we are going to allow the users to ask for a date. Uh, we can uh, transition to date error. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is to actually get the uh, the values from uh, from the variables that we defined. In this case, in the first three lines that I just pasted, uh, we are using conversation as the object that holds. Uh, all the information related to uh, not just the component, but also the uh, actual conversation uh, between the bot of the user, and use the uh, and use the properties to get the location variable. Um, in this case, um, we are not using the values directly, so we are not sending the values directly to the location variable. To the, to, to the yeah to the proper to the input property and that's because uh, if you want to actually um, let's say pass the value if by any chance you modify this value in the component but you don't modify it in the in the flow you will get an error so what we do is to uh, use a placeholder like location value where we where we send the actual variable value that holds the value. So uh, it's a bit tricky, but uh, I think it's the best way to go. So after we get the actual variable name, we retrieve the variable value with conversation.variable. So uh, next, uh, we're going to uh, define some variables that we are going to use. So for example, um, So uh, we are getting the uh, request module, the open weather API, 
uh, that I need to paste from the uh, open weather map page. So I can just uh, copy this one and paste it here and the date format. Uh, next thing is uh, to add the two uh, So next thing is to add the two functions or the two promises that we have created to um, that holds the actual call to the services. So uh, you were asking before for the URL for the service. So you can get it here. This is the one. So we are using two different services. Okay, so uh, as I was saying, there are two different services we are calling because uh, there is one service to, to get the current weather and another one to get the seven days forecast. So um, yeah, so these are the two functions. So if we manage to get the data, uh, we just make a resolve with the data. And if not, we just reject with the error that we get from the service. So, and now the actual uh, business logic, let's say, so we have uh, all this code to copy and paste, and then I will explain uh, what is doing. Let's format the document. Okay. So uh, what we're going to do first is to, uh, so as I said before, uh, what we are allowing the users to do is to search for a date that is less or yeah, less than seven or less on, or equals than seven days from now. So you cannot ask, or the user will not be able to ask for uh, next month's uh, weather, for example. Uh, so uh, what we're doing first is to get the, the difference in days. And if, the, uh, if that difference is greater than seven, we are just making a transition to date error. If this is uh, not correct, we proceed. And what we do is to get uh, the current weather for uh, the location. And, and you will ask, why are you, so if I ask for the weather for tomorrow, why, why are you uh, actually asking uh, or calling first the current weather for today and then asking the weather for tomorrow, right? And this is because uh, as, there, as those are two different services, in the first service, the, to get the current weather, you can uh, actually provide a location by city or the name of the city, but you cannot do that for the service uh, of the seven days forecast. So you have to provide an actual uh, latitude and longitude. So that's what we are getting from the first service. Where do I need to, pass, to paste the code? So this block of code has to go right after the, uh, the variables, the, the, the import of the modules on the open weather, uh, open weather API key inside the uh, invoke uh, function. Uh, after this is uh, completed, uh, we can continue for the next step. And that includes actually running the service. So, uh, you can go back to the terminal tab and click on uh, this command here. So it is running right now, right? So uh, once the service is running, you can go back to uh, Oracle Digital Assistant, uh, access your weather skill. So uh, you can go to your weather skill go to the functions uh, or components folder, uh, option, sorry, and create a new service. So for the name of the service, you can use, uh, for example, uh, weather uh, service and uh, the option. So there are several options to uh, host your components. The first one is the embedded container. So uh, you can actually do an NPM pack uh, of the component and upload it here. Uh, 
the second option is to host it on Oracle Mobile Cloud. Uh, the fourth one is the Oracle function. So you can have a, a function uh, uploaded or running in, uh, in OCI and call it from here. And the third one and last one, and the one we're going to use is the external. So you can actually host it on any place you want. So uh, the URL for this service is auto-generated for your own instance uh, or, or for your own uh, Catacoda session. So you can copy and paste uh, this URL in here and paste it in the service. Um, so uh, as username and password, as the component is not uh, password protected, uh, but you need to provide something, you can just type test. So for production, uh, you, you really want to have the component secure. And just create it. So uh, as you see, uh, we have the weather service with one, with one uh, component in it. This is the weather query that uh, we defined. So uh, this would be up and running already. So uh, we just continue. And now what we need to do is to make some modifications to the uh, actual flow to consume the, uh, the component we have just created. So I will move this to uh, the other window. So you can actually see, uh, see the code easily. So uh, if you remember, uh, we had um, a print weather uh, component uh, that was uh, printing the information, the uh, static information for Madrid weather for a specific date. So uh, what we need to do is after the uh, user has provided all the uh, information required, and that is the date optionally and the location, we can add a new component in here that is actually calling or using the uh, weather.query uh, custom component that we created where uh, the, each of the uh, properties or variables that we define on the component is uh, using uh, the location variable for uh, location, date variable date, and print variable for weather. So this means that after all the information is provided, this, the service call will be executed. Uh, all the information will be stored in the weather variable and if there is a success, we will transition to the print weather component in here. And if there is a data error, we will go to the show data error uh, state. As we are using a new variable here, weather, we have to define it as well under uh, context variables. Okay, it is here right now already. Uh, we need to make some more changes. So uh, after the, the user has provided, we have tried to recover the uh, location that the user wants to search for. Uh, we need, instead of transitioning to the print weather, we actually need to uh, transition to the query weather. So we actually make the call. So we just make a next transition to the query weather state. We need to do two more things. The first one is to add uh, a show data error uh, state. So we can transition to that state if the error is not correct. So we can add it here, for example. And the second thing is to make some changes to the print weather state. So as I mentioned before, we are using static data and we actually need to modify this and 
uh, use uh, the data that we get from the service. So how is that done? Uh, in this case, we are going to uh, use the weather variable as the iterator variable. In this case, you can have more than one. Just imagine if you ask for the weather for the next three days, you can have uh, more than one card being displayed on the chatbot. So uh, this weather holds an, this weather variable holds an array with one position in this case. And uh, we can get the uh, values with uh, an expression weather.date, weather.weather, weather.icon, weather.temp, for example. This at the end depends on how do you store the values uh, in the weather variable. Um, as you can see, we are using some uh, Apache free marker expressions. For example, even though we can uh, identify, uh, for example, Madrid uh, with no capital letter, we can just capitalize to turn the first uh, letter as a capital letter, or we can use the round uh, function to uh, round the actual temperature. And there are many other functions that you can use uh, or get benefit from in order to make uh, your life easier when implementing the, uh, the dialogue flow. Okay, so uh, yeah, so we should be ready uh, to uh, test the service or test the bot. So uh, let's start with uh, what's the weather in Barcelona, for example? I think there should be something wrong in the, uh, sorry, in the actual component. So let me check it quickly. This is good. You see some live debugging. Yeah. <laughs> we had one of the questions is asking about debugging. Yeah. So, uh, for example, you can see here that uh, every time I call the service, so I, I call it twice. So you get some uh, invoking. So uh, you have here on the terminal tab, the, the actual log that the uh, component is printing. In this case, I have not defined any uh, console log, so you will not see anything, but uh, yeah, you can see it there. Um, let me try to execute this again. and make some quick test. Let's copy this. Yeah, so uh, there was something wrong. I need to check whether the Katakoda is correct or I just did it uh, without looking and I made the mistake. Um, but yeah, so uh, for you to see this, so uh, the service was executed and we stored under the weather variable, the temperature, the, uh, the weather condition, the icon, the date, etc. So uh, here you can, or you can add some console logs, or errors or warnings, so you can actually debug, debug the component. So uh, yeah, so this is the weather for tomorrow in Barcelona. Uh, let's try something more, something else. So. Uh, is it going to rain in Madrid the day after tomorrow? Oh, there's this. Yeah. So I realized some some kind of uh, some kind of uh, mini error in the flow because uh, if I don't reset the uh, the city is not updated and it will always uh, use the previous one. So this is what I uh, told you the other day, the other day. So uh, if you are not doing like uh, in this case. Uh, 
a return here. Actually, the variables such as location and date will not be uh, cleared. So uh, if you try to ask something again, uh, it will not go through this, uh, let's say, through this, uh, through, through, uh, through these set variables and uh, it will not ask the user for a location because the, the location variable is already uh, filled, right? But yeah, with this change uh, that I did here with this return, uh, it should be fine. Uh, so yeah, this was the actual uh, the, the actual lab uh, three. So uh, as I said before, do not close this scenario. So keep it open. And if you want to go to the next scenario, you can have you can do like I say here. Uh, right click on the next scenario button and open in a new tab. Because if you close this and you try to access the uh, service that is deployed in Katakoda, it will not be running. So um, the last uh, scenario is, is, uh, is really short. So uh, the idea in this scenario is to build uh, this website in here. Uh, it's uh, pretty simple because uh, Oracle provides um, Oracle provides a web SDK that uh, you can uh, run without making any kind of uh, configuration. So it's just setting the URL of ODA and the channel uh, ID, and it will be up and running. Um, so let's just start it. Let's make uh, this here. So uh, the first thing we have to do, or the yeah, is to create a new channel. So uh, in Oracle Digital Assistant, in the main menu under Development, you can see channels. And now uh, you can create a new one by clicking this button. The name, for example, you can call it Katakoda uh, widget. Then the channel type, uh, in this case, we are going to select Oracle Web, but you can see in this list uh, a number of channels that Oracle ODA or Oracle Digital System provide, provides out of the box, such as Facebook Messenger, a webhook to integrate with any uh, messaging or any application you want, Twilio, Slack, uh, Teams, Cortana, uh, and uh, native iOS and Android, and Oracle Web. So uh, Oracle Web is a JavaScript um, um, channel. So you can, uh, so if you are implementing, let's say a Visual Builder app, you will be using Oracle Web, no Android and iOS. So, uh, a bit of security, so you can enable uh, the, the domains uh, where you are going to host the chatbot. In this case, uh, we don't want any kind of security, but definitely this is something you have to take care of in, uh, in a production environment. Uh, the same with client authentication, so we are going to disable it. And then the session of the actual session, the, the session of the uh, actual chatbot. Uh, you can define, uh, so this is the maximum, but you can define any number you want. So it was 60 minutes before, for example. Now it's uh, greater. So, and we create it. So uh, once we have it created, uh, here is the channel ID that you need to uh, copy and paste to be used later. I will do it now. And then uh, there are uh, two more things we need to do. The first one is to actually select the skill. Uh, in this case, you can also select a digital assistant, the skill that we are going to uh, expose through this channel. So in this case, uh, you can filter, you have a lot. So you only have three, and just select the weather skill. Okay, so it is already mapped the Katakoda with your channel to the weather skill. Uh, now, before going back to Katakoda, we just need to enable the channel. Until you enable it, 
you will not be able to actually access uh, or, or directly, it will not work. So we enable it, it is mapped. So we can go back to Catacola. Uh, this step is the one we have just done. This step, we have just done it. Uh, we have already created the channel and associated the skill and enabled the channel. So we are back to, uh, to Catacoda and start, um, first of all, getting the uh, actual um, widget that is uh, runnable. So uh, this can be executed as a, well, this is a node application that can be executed and will expose the widget uh, through, uh, I don't know which port, if it is uh, 8,000, I don't know, I will I will see later. So uh, we will navigate to the ODA component uh, folder, and now we're going to, meet, to make a Git clone to get the actual code. Okay, it is completed. So after we download all the uh, application sources, we can do an npm install to install all the dependencies. So uh, once this is done, uh, now we're going to start uh, understanding the SDK and the different files that you can find in there. So uh, we can go to the IDE, we will see where we will see the uh, Visual Studio code that we will use to make the modifications uh, to the widget. And this is the, uh, the structure. So, um, so the actual web SDK is just this JavaScript file uh, that you can uh, add to any website by uh, using these two uh, lines of code here. Well, actually one but uh, we are using also the settings.js uh, file to actually do the uh, configuration of the uh, component of the, of the widget. Uh, some other uh, things that you have to add is uh, this style link. So you can actually define the styles of the widget uh, within these two files or within style.css file. And as I said, the web SDK, so this is a, let's say a black box, um, but Oracle enables or provides some kind of functions and properties in order to modify it. And the uh, actual file where we're going to work that is settings.js. So, um, Going from the beginning, so is client out enabled? This uh, property uh, should be the same as the one you have defined on the actual channel. So if you have disabled clean authentication here, you need to set it, set it here to false. So it will actually uh, bypass the, uh, the authentication. Um, more things here. Um, so inside the init SDK, that is the function that is actually uh, initializing the widget. Uh, there are some configuration that we need to do. So uh, the only two configurations that you can do by default, then you can modify colors uh, or some kind of look and feel. But uh, in order to have this working, we need to provide the URI. And this means the uh, URL, the domain, the domain, let's say, of your instance. So after HTTPS uh, slash slash, you can get this URL here. And you can uh, paste it here. And also the uh, channel ID in here and paste it here. So uh, with these two uh, properties, it should be working. So um, we're going to save this, go back to the terminal, 
and make a CD to get a Coda widget runnable uh, folder and start the application. So uh, once you see the server, list, server listening on port 3000, you can go uh, to the other tab, the web widget, and it will open in a new uh, tab and you will have the actual uh, widget here up and running, I guess your ODA instance. So if you ask for the weather in London, you will actually get the weather in, in London for today. So uh, it's pretty simple, as you can see, and we already have the chatbot exposed in your website. So uh, let's go back to uh, Katakoda and uh, to click here. So uh, there are more kind of configurations you can do. Uh, for example, you can define, as I have here, some colors that you can add. You can also, uh, let's say here in the user guide MD, there is a full list of uh, what kind of, let me go back to it. Okay, so uh, some feature flags that you can enable or disable such as speech. Uh, if you want to allow the users to provide attachments such as uh, images or, or uh, documents. Um, if you want to have some kind of uh, embedded, if you want to embed it uh, in, uh, in a website, like uh, in a full page, instead of as a, as a widget, uh, a bunch of colors you can modify, uh, you can change the uh, icons uh, and the logos that, that are being displayed. Uh, I mean, you can make a lot of configurations here but uh, yeah, for this lab, I just uh, you know added the colors, so you can see how easy it is to uh, actually modify uh, to actually modify the uh, the colors of the uh, widget. So uh, if I am not wrong, uh, this was it. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, and uh, I hope uh, this was good for you to see that uh, how easy it is to implement a chatbot using the tool. So thank you everybody for attending the third series of our webinar on Oracle Digital Assistant. If you have questions, you can always use Cloud Customer Connect. There you can post your questions. You can also post innovations and you can earn badges. So make sure you visit Cloud Customer Connect and we also monitor the discussion forum there and post our monthly newsletter and upcoming events. If you would like to network within the community, we offer the Oracle developer meetups. Right now we host monthly webcasts like today and there are multiple groups at the meetup.com platform. When you search for Oracle developer meetups, you can find us in Utrecht, Brussels, Cairo, Istanbul, Lille, France, Lisbon, London, Madrid, Oslo, Sao Paulo. And we are excited to work with you to create a local group. Ruben is heading the group in Madrid. So make sure you join the team in Madrid. And I also posted an overview at my blog with direct links at bit.ly slash developer meetups. I would like to highlight the document and training material that Grant's team created. Grant, why don't you give us all the details? as you created uh, those wonderful set of materials. Yes, so there, there is a, a single uh, URL, which I'll put into the, the chat, it's a bit.ly uh, link, bit.ly slash ODA doc. Um, and that's a one-stop shop for everything. So that's the documentation. We have about 200 technical blog articles. We've got 60 videos. We've got 20 tutorials. We've got 40 uh, PowerPoint presentations. Everything we use and develop for our training, internal and external, we make publicly available as well. So um, yeah, I'll pop that into the, 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 the chat widget and you guys can, uh, can check out everything. If you would like to find out who are the experts on Oracle Digital Assistant, you can use Partner Finder. 
and you search for digital assistant and you will find, for example, companies like Avantic that Rubens works for. And if you would like to look for pre-built bots, please visit the cloud marketplace. There, for example, you can find a chatbot from Intracy, a partner in the US who built a solution for higher education. In case you have implemented successful Oracle Digital Assistant as a partner, please make sure you update your partner find a profile that our customers can find you. And in case you develop the solution or a template, please publish them in Cloud Marketplace and let us know. And of course, continue to ask Arti. Grant, I think Arti went live this week. You would like to add Yeah, to Yeah, so uh, on that same link I posted, which is the the, the, the landing page for everything to do with digital assistant. We have Artie sitting on that page now. So ask Artie. In fact, what I've been doing with some of the Q&A questions that are coming in is put them into Artie and uh, we're getting a reasonable um, response rate. So um, that's good. But, you know, Artie doesn't know everything. We're going to get smarter. But, um, yeah, yeah, keep using it. And, and in thirty session, we'll talk a little bit more about best practices. I'm going to drill into how we have implemented some of those best practices in, in RT as well. So please keep asking RT, help us to train RT and grant any update how many questions we received already? In the first 24 hours, we had about 600 questions that came into RT. Um, on Tuesday last week, when we did the first session, we uh, we had about, RT answered about 500 questions where Myself uh, and the other presenters managed 112 questions in the same time. So uh, Artie was, was working uh, about five times harder than us. We are in process to publish uh, the latest edition of the customer newsletter. Martin, over to you. Yeah, so our, our newsletter is our way to basically keep in touch with everybody in the community about what's happening, uh, all the news is around the product. Uh, upcoming events. Uh, I'm sure many of you probably learned about this training through the newsletter, uh, but also we publish customer success stories and some of the best practice articles that we pick out from uh, the library that Grant's team creates. So if you follow the uh, the links that are on here, you can see the uh, the March edition is one that's out. We're just wrapping up the April edition. I think it's about to go out in the next 24 hours. Uh, but if you go to the bit.ly slash ODA news, there's a whole archive of all the previous editions and you can subscribe from there too. And for all the partners, we have the developer partner community newsletter with updates on digital assistant and developer tools like chat and VBCS and application backend like our J2E server web logic. There you also find upcoming trainings and all the technical information. To highlight some resources and to summarize them, Visit the Oracle Digital Assistant website, make use of the documentation. And RT, today's webinar and future webinars are available on demand at tinyo.com slash watch ODA video. If you have questions, please feel free to post them at Cloud Customer Connect. And the training course from Ruben is available at Kadakoda for both versions and in the new Redwood UI. Please subscribe to our customer newsletter and the partner newsletter. Next Thursday, we are going to give you insights on how to build an awesome bot and Grant Ronald is going to do that presentation. Grant, do you would like to promote it a little bit? Yeah, you know, you guys have been working hard over the past uh, three sessions and getting hands on and, and getting an essence of building a digital assistant. And that's that's the core skills. You're just gonna have to, you know, um, you know get, get more experience, but you've got the core skills there of intents and entities and dialogue flow and back and integration. But that doesn't necessarily make or mean you can build a really engaging or, or a robust conversational experience. So something that, that me and my team, we've worked in you know, literally hundreds of chatbot projects is starting to gather what are the good experiences, you know, Right from the beginning, from planning a project, how do you start a conversational project? What are the important things? What are the use cases? Through to things like, what does it mean to design a conversation? You know, what is conversational design? What are the tips for conversational design? How do you handle ambiguity? How do you handle 
errors? How do you handle when the user does something you don't expect? What words do you use? How do you train your models to understand the infinite number of ways that people can ask questions? And, and when the bot gets things wrong, as invariable, invariably it will do, how do you handle that gracefully in a way that still leaves a, a, a good or positive uh, experience? Um, you know, those are the, the the things that really go from building a very simple bot to building something which is is you know very real uh, and and successful. And also, I think this knowledge is is kind of interesting because if you are thinking about conversational projects, these are the kind of discussions you would be having with customers and stakeholders and developers. Things about designing the conversation, partitioning. The, uh, the 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 development um, training the models testing the models all these things as well so we're, we're going to show you a, 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 some really interesting stuff it's not very technical but it's really interesting on how we we approach these projects and uh, I will d dive into the, the code that we have you've seen them played with RT and if you have questions about you know how did RT deal with that how did we train RT um, you know a little I think thing that's kind of interesting is RT is um, self made up of about 12 skills, uh, about 300 intents, about 16,000 utterances, and, and we have 180,000 tests that we run against RT to try and, um, you know, make RT as robust as we can, given language is really, really, really tough in terms of understanding what people mean. And certainly RT is a really tough use case because unlike ordering a pizza or, you know, if you're doing a pizza bot, there's only five or six use cases you need to cover, you know, ordering pizza, cancelling it, checking your order status or, you know, asking for a menu. The, the domain for RT is, is pretty large because, you know, you can ask almost any development question. I'm looking at the logs as you guys are, are using RT, and I can see there, there's some great questions, there's some crazy questions, and there's some things that we just are not in domain, and how can we deal with these things about, you know, someone's asked about fusion authentication or setting up fusion authentication, or uh, someone else is, is asking kind of uh, questions about what's Java, you know, those are, how do we deal with this stuff? So we'll talk about that, and we'll show you these experiences as well. So Spread the word. If you got colleagues who would like to learn more about the the, the general approach to great design, then um, invite them along as well. So uh, yeah, that's it. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. I promise you that. Great. Thank you very much, Grant. Special thanks to Ruben for the awesome, wonderful hands-on training running last Thursday and today. That was an awesome job. If you did like the trading, make sure you contact Ruben via LinkedIn and write him a nice recommendation or send him a quote via Twitter. Ruben, thank you very much. Uh, congratulations, great job. Thank you, Jürgen, for having me here. With that, we would like to say thank you for everybody attending and we are looking forward to welcome you on Thursday, April 29th with the best practice session by Grant Ronald. Thanks for watching.